my beautiful ladies and, and gents. I'm sure there's a couple gents. Just all my folks, all my people. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Give Them Lala. What day is it? What day is it? Well, it's this will air Wednesday. It's Monday right now, but oh, this will air I'm feeling Wednesday. a little like. Can I tell you? Hmm. I've realized that when I decide to go and do something, mm-hmm. if I go to bed, let's just say anytime after midnight, mm-hmm. like it's all the same after that. What if I'm you- going to bed after midnight, I could be going to bed at midnight and it might as well be five in the morning because it's all, no matter if I get yes. eight hours of sleep, I'm the next morning, I'm going to feel sick. I'm going to feel depleted. I'm not going to be digging life. That is the same for me. That's really? so weird. Yeah. Yeah. That's the same for me. If I go to bed after midnight and it doesn't matter if I have one drink or five, I will feel the same. So usually when I go out, I just don't drink because I'm like, what's the point? What's the point? Yeah. Well, and I told my my mom, <laughs> I told my beautiful mother, because we're obsessing over Game of Thrones right now, and mm-hmm. like I cannot stop watching. Yeah. But I told her, like, when the clock hits 11, mm-hmm. we're done. Yeah. You go to bed, I go to bed, there's no more. Because if we push into midnight, my, my whole next day is going to be shot yeah and even though it's a weekend like my kid doesn't care yeah my kid's like time to wake up <laughs> and play and run around and it's exhausting right right not and just being a mom but just like if I go to bed too late I'm mm-hmm. like fuck this I, and it's I easy to do that with Game of Thrones because you're like just one more we have to see what happens next like just one more and then with Game of Thrones next thing you know it's freaking 3 a.m. 3 in the morning and yeah. I'm having to wake up and be mom and run a business and put food on the table and pay these bills. So you're exhausted today. You don't I'm seem a, it. I don't. No, not at all. You look, your skin is glowing. She's got the pony bun in, which if you guys don't know, is the new is the new style. It's actually starting to get probably old now because it's been like going strong for about two weeks. But it's the <laughs> <laughs> two weeks and it's over and I've just caught on. It's Damn the it. thing that Kim Kardashian and all these supermodels have been wearing. I'm so done with that, by the way. Kim. Kim Kardashian brings back the middle part. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I've been rocking that shit since the first grade. I know. The middle Kim part. Kardashian brings back the swoop bang. No, I've no. been rocking that shit all season. I know. But because my season doesn't air <laughs> until God knows when, it's going to look like Kim K did it, but she didn't do it. No, Lala she didn't. Kent Lala did Lala Kent did it first. Hers looks better, but <laughs> make no mistake, the swoop bang never went out of style. That's true. That's no. true. Um, I do but, love me some Kim Kardashian. Though. Yeah. You know that. I like, I only know four celebrities. Yeah. Kim Kardashian, Rihanna, Beyonce, Hailey Bieber. Yep. Done. No, that's true. That's all done. I care about. She says done. Done. Okay. So with that, you didn't come in today seeming exhausted to me, but you did seem over some things. You seem just like, I'm done with these things. Can we share with what they are? Wait, You're what bored did I tell with you? something. Oh my gosh. <laughs> just can I tell you? So like I'm familiar with the athlete game. When I was a mm-hmm. youngin, mm-hmm. Like early twenties, I I loved I loved a good athlete, mm-hmm. right? I'm so bored with them now. Yeah, why? Like you because I'm I just am. I'm yeah. like you dribble a ball, okay? Yeah. You got the wrong audience member. Unimpressed, right? You right. Dri- you dribble a basketball. You may be great at it, like great, perfect, cool. Yeah, but I'm like, what you think you don't gotta like show up? You gotta show up. Like you, you gotta give me something, anything. Right. And it's like, you're asking me all of these things. And then Mm -hmm. I respond to you. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm just bored. Yeah. Like, I'm just bored. Yeah. I don't think it's just an athlete thing. I just think it's a day and age thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I'm no stranger to what these men are doing. Mm -hmm. I know I'm one of 7,200 chicks that you're talking to. Right. Sliding in my DM. Got it. Yeah. All right. I don't think I'm special to you, but like, don't make me be bored. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Don't make me bored. It's the, and people. No, it's don't make me be bored. Don't make me be bored. This says Lala. (laughs) Don't make me be bored. (laughs) Putting that on a t-shirt. No, um, it's like the thing where, and this might not be true and some people are going to hate me for it, but it's like, 
the the hot girl or the super hot guy with no personality. And I know that's not the case because look at you, Lala. I know that's not the case with everyone, but there is like something where if you have a certain talent or you're super, super hot, your personality in some people just kind of falls by the wayside or the effort is just not there. It's like, here I am. My presence is gift enough. I don't have to keep a conversation going. I don't have to keep it interesting. And that's not the vibe. No, because when you're boring, you're yeah. forcing me to be boring. And yeah. I'm not boring. And let's be honest. I'm not walking in here looking like Irina Shake. All right. <laughs> I know my place. <laughs> I know my place. So like you need to know your place. Right. Because you're not Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> all right. Wait, is he single? <gasps> yeah, Michael. Can I tell you, though, I loved what? when so Michael B. Jordan came in a close second mm-hmm. to Kobe Bryant for me. I used to watch hardball every single day with Keanu Reeves. I don't mm-hmm. know if you ever saw it. The, no. the baseball movie. OK. And um, Michael B. Jordan played Jamal. And when Jamal makes his exit or Michael B. Jordan makes his exit, mm-hmm. which is like middle of the movie and then he doesn't come back until the very end okay i would stop the movie (laughs) and start it from the beginning because i'm like all i want to see is is a freaking jamal on the screen so he was younger then he was a baby he was so young really and then all of a sudden years later and can i tell you he was so hard to look up on the internet because you look up michael b jordan and he was like he had maybe like a couple movies yeah and michael jordan michael would pop jordan up and it's like where the fuck <laughs> can i look up michael b jordan like have i you, need him on my screen somewhere have you ever seen him in person no okay i'm interested to see if he's got like i've heard that he has like the most like you know how sometimes you see hot people and then you see him in person and you're like okay it's a little i think he might be under- on the shorter side though is he? Heard he's on the shorter side, but I've heard his energy and his like way of carrying himself. Height doesn't matter. He's Height just doesn't like, matter. B- he's just like the B- D- yeah. <laughs> coming in hot. However, I was sleeping with someone for a while. Okay. This was years ago. Who was like extremely close to him. Oh. Like thick, thick, thick. And you never, did you get any tea on him or no? Can I tell you? What? I'm so not that person. You don't want. Like, I don't need tea. Yeah. I'm good. Or just like some. I like tea if it's like innocent. Like if you knew that like, oh, my God, he's obsessed with cats. He has like 17 in his house. <laughs> I'd be I like, oh, my God. It. Then I want to talk about it. <laughs> That's the kind of tea. But you know, when people were saying when we asked people like, what do you want to see on the podcast? And they were like, more yeah. tea spilling. I'm mm-hmm. like, that ain't me. No, I'm not the type of person where I hear something. Because by the way, hmm. I know a lot of shit. In this I know. Town. I know. I know. You know? Yeah, you totally do. I can just tell. Like, I'm well aware of all the Kathy Hilton stuff that went on behind the scenes. You are? 100%. I've been reading about that. I'll have to ask you off of the podcast. I just, it's not my, I don't need to talk about it. Right. I know so much. Right. That if I were to run over to one of these little Bravo blogs and share, the tea is piping hot. The (laughs) English breakfast is ready to be spilled. All right? But I'm just, I just don't care. Like, what is, you know? What does it do for you? Yeah. I'm the person who hears things. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh, cool. Okay. Moving on. So this is not the podcast to come to hear me spilling the tea. Yeah. I always tell people, if you want good tea, yeah. you head over to the Juicy Scoop. I've been very open about the struggles I've had with my hair since I got pregnant with Ocean. Hormones and breastfeeding on top of me bleaching my hair has really done a number and it made me very self-conscious, I won't even lie. And I worried about how I looked whenever I would film Vanderpump Rules. So I started talking about it because I wanted you to know that if you're suffering from thinning hair, you are not alone and you don't have to suffer in silence. Over half of women will experience thinning hair in their lifetime. It is a thing. And Nutrafol is looking to normalize hair struggles through shedding the silence. If you're going through hair struggles of any kind, I know exactly how you feel and you are not alone. I feel for you and so does Nutrafol. Nutrafol is on a mission to normalize female hair issues and they've created a space for us to connect, talk about, and destigmatize female hair issues together. And you guys know that I am all about discussing things. I'm an open book. Let's talk about it all, even if it's uncomfortable. Your hair story could help another woman. So join the conversation at ShedTheSilence.com. That's ShedTheSilence.com. Do I- 
Come join TV's Ross Matthews every Thursday on his new podcast, Hello, Ross. Hi, I'm Ross Matthews, and I am so excited to tell you about my brand new podcast, Hello, Ross. You know, I, I just said that. Yeah, I know. I was just saying it again to emphasize the name of my new podcast. It's Hello, Ross. Look, you only have like 30 seconds to tell them about the new podcast, Hello, Ross. You have to tell them about the celebrity guests, the interesting people with cool stories to tell, and it's new every Thursday. Go ahead. You never know who's going to pop by to say, Hello, Ross. It could be an Oscar winner, the star of your favorite show, even my dental hygienist. Really? No, she's fascinating. Okay. Anyone else? One time I was at a dinner party and the lady across from me, turns out she was a dominatrix. Ooh, that's going to hurt. I've been a naughty boy. <laughs> huh. Are you going to ask? We're going to go there. For reals? And there. For real reals? You better stretch. I better stretch? What the hell? On our show, nothing's off limits. I'm going to ask that question. No. And that question. No. <laughs> and I'm going to get away with it. Oh, boy. So it's like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, right? Except think of it, Mr. Matthews' Gaberhood. <laughs> oh, that sounds fun. You know, that actually does sound fun. And it's on YouTube or wherever you listen. Wait, that's my line. Hello, Ross, available on YouTube or wherever you listen. Okay, now you just repeated me. We are so over our time limit. Oh, that's a bummer. Speaking of tea, though, this is the tea, the kind of tea you're going to get on this podcast. I still a lot of tea about myself, though. I'm constantly telling you, on myself. But that is good, because you have the right to do that. It's you. You I'm know like, what There's I'm a saying? lot of Lala tea that I could <laughs> spill. It's the Lala tea you'll hear is Lala and I are actually going to be in New York this week. I need it so bad, Jess. I don't mm. know what it is about today. Yeah. I even posted on social media. I'm like, I'm going to be very vulnerable night, right now. Like, my life is so weird. And I usually wake up in a fantastic mood. And what's weird is that, like, TMI right now, mm -hmm. I'm, like, on the tail end of your period. my friend. Okay. And it's usually at the beginning where I'm, like, a raging. And I know. I'm like, okay, Law, you just got to, like, sit in the bed before you take everyone out. Because right. you know why you're feeling this way. But I'm feeling like that today. Are you? Just a little bit like defeated. Like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. So I posted because I'm looking forward. Like I just want to go and be around people who are uplifting to me. Mm -hmm. And inspiring. And I'll be honest. Who like want to show me a lot of love. Like yeah. I need love right now. Yeah. I'm a needy bitch right now. You're a needy bitch right now? Well, yeah. I don't feel it, but I I didn't even see that post. I'm going to look at it right now. But what I love about this, it's event at Shopify in Soho, and you can find the details about it on Lala's page and stuff, but is that you get to just like, it's almost like tour because I remember how much you loved talking one-on-one -on -one with your people before the show. And this is like that where you're going to be able to talk to them one-on-one -on -one and take photos and stuff. Um, and I remember how much that seemed to lift you up. So I'm it excited. Does lift that, me yeah, up yeah. Because I feel like people that are coming, mm -hmm. like they're just my people. Yeah, they're you your know? people. I just want to feel like inspired. It's my first ever pop-up for the brand. So we're going to yes. have like all my merch. We're going to have beauty, skin, give them Lala baby. Like it's so people can come. We can bump gums. If you want to shop, you can shop. If you yep. want to just have a drink and bump gums, like it's that, free to show up. Just RSVP. All you have to do. That's the other thing. Yeah. You just, it's just an experience. Just yeah. like click that you're RS coming yeah. and show roll up. Roll in. If you want to buy something, you buy something. If you don't, you don't mm -hmm. like whatever. Let's just hang out. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'll post it again. The I'll post the link again. But yeah. I'm coming to New York, October 1st. I really, really... What is going on with my throat? I had hiccups for five hours yesterday. My, I haven't had a hiccup since I was like a child. <laughs> <laughs> like Ocean gets them all the time. I get them when I eat something spicy. Is that when she gets them? When she eats something spicy? Well, I don't give my one and a half year old spicy food. <laughs> yeah, after she has a, a Tabasco sauce, she really gets the hiccups. <laughs> I love you, Jess. Not a mom. Like, You're not so a mom. not a mom yet. Yeah. Does she eat jalapenos? <laughs> does she get them too? No, she does not. Sometimes I think like, oh my god, I could do this mom thing. And other times I'm like, I'm never gonna be able to have a baby because I just don't no, know are. some things. No, Jessica, you have a working brain. All right, <laughs> when you have the baby, you're gonna know. Hot sauce probably not a good idea for my one and a half year old. It, right. <laughs> um, Back to what I was saying. Yes. All you have to do is RSVP. I'm coming to New York. October 1st is when you guys can come hang out and play mm -hmm. with me. <laughs> and play with me. Yeah. Um, 
And also Sophia Franklin. Yes. Is going to be there. And she's the one who is going, we're doing like a little one-on-one interview. So. With a Q&A after. So if you want tea, I mean, maybe Lala will spill. Maybe she won't. But you could at least ask. Right. By the way, that's the thing. I'm an oversharer. Yeah. So when people yeah, ask me things, I haven't. I have not conquered the art of being like, next question. No, not at all. Because on tour, I she, people would ask her things and I would be like in the wings, like shaking my head. No, like don't answer. And then she would go off. And I was like, no. I know. I need to, sh- I need to learn how to shut up. No, they loved it. Well, yeah. Love- and then I suffer the repercussions of oversharing. It That's happens true. every time. That's true. And the link's in her bio, by the way. I just, yeah, I was checking to make sure. So come hang out with me because yeah. I'm needy and I need you guys mm-hmm. to lift my spirits. And by the way, I post it because I'm leaving my mom at home. Because I'm like, yeah. you know what? This is my time. Because I have like a few, a few uh, boys living in New York where I'm like, you know what? Come one, come all. <laughs> Maybe. I don't care. We ripped we'll the see. Band-Aid off. There's no turning back. We'll see. So if you see Lala out and about in New York with a fine looking man, mind your business. <laughs> Keep mind walking. your business. <laughs> oh my God. I met the hottest guy over the weekend too. Can we? Okay. So I saw a picture of him. I mean, she's not lying. But can we get into that at all? No. I How you see. met him? Or do you want to keep this all close? I want to keep it close. Keep it close. For right now. Okay. Just for right now. And then I want to spill all the tea on it. Oh, my God. You know, I let's love just that. see. Let's just see. <gasps> let's see. Okay. Um, today's episode is really inspiring mm-hmm. because, you know, I love this podcast because we can bring people on who have incredible stories. And hold on, Jess. It's my mom. Say mama. Say mama. It's mama. Hi, baby. Mama. You want to see Cruzy? Say yes. Say yes. Okay. Say mama. <laughs> mama. <laughs> I love baby. I love you. All right. I'm going to um, finish this podcast. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to finish this podcast and then I'm coming home and we're going to go to Brittany's house. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, that's great. All right, I love you, O. I'll see you in a second. I love you. Bye, baby. Okay, bye. Bye, honey. Bye. How stinking cute was that? Um, so about my guest. Mm-hmm. She wrote me a letter. It was a letter that I want to have framed because her story is devastating, but absolutely uplifting. And... She's she's a survivor. She's a burn victim who is now, I believe, in the fifth grade. And I just want you guys to hear her story. I think it's important to hear people's stories, especially these young kids, where they experience things that not many people have experienced. It has shaped her entire life. And I mean, the the letter she wrote me, I just, I wrote her back and said, I am so excited to see what you do in your future because someone who's been through what she's been through at that age and just the way that she wrote me and her mom is amazing. So I'm very excited without giving too much away and telling you guys her story. I want it to come from her and her mom. So my next guest is Aaliyah and you guys will hear her up next. Okay, I'm super excited about this guest. Not only am I excited, I'm extremely inspired. Her name is Aaliyah. She sent me a letter and the cutest t-shirts for me and Ocean. Aaliyah, how are you, my love? Good. Good, we like that. So for my listeners who don't know you or your story, can you tell us about who you are? My name is Aaliyah Shepard and I'm a burn survivor. Oh my gosh. By the way, you're absolutely beautiful. I mean that face. Hi, mom. (laughs) We got Aaliyah's mama with us too. Um, Aaliyah, are you comfortable sharing with my listeners how you became a burn victim? Because I I have your bio in front of me and just how old you were and what that was like for you. Yes. When I was eight years old, I leaned over a candle and I burnt myself. Well, the fire caught up to my shirt into flames. And like when that happened, what, I mean, mom, were you there? No. So um, 
we had left to go to the store to because it was my older daughter's birthday the next day. So my husband and I left to go to the store with the other kids. And my oldest said, she's like, well, I can watch Aaliyah. We'll be fine. And I said, OK, and on our way back is when we got the call from my oldest daughter. And all she said was Aaliyah's on fire. House is on fire. And hung up the phone. So we instantly panicked and sped home. We were probably like 30 seconds from home. We pulled up, we ran upstairs to our apartment and um, my oldest was just pulling Aaliyah out of the shower and she was completely burnt. Um, The whole front torso was burned, the whole back. And she had pieces of like her legs that were burned. The whole back of her head was completely like singed and burned, all the hair was gone. And there was like little fires throughout our house. And um, my husband started putting the fires away. And at that time I worked at the hospital. So my instant reaction was just to hold her arms up because I knew if she put her arms down, then it was going to stick together. And so um, we had uh, called 911. Uh, Ironically, there was two other fires going on in our apartment complex at the same time as ours due to different things. And so every time we called the fire department, they thought that we were calling for those ones that were already going on. So they weren't coming to our house. And so I ran outside, we got one of the firemen and they came to our house and they knew they had to get her to the hospital right then. And, um, The shirt that she was wearing is one of those sequin ones. Well, when she leaned over the candle, that pulled the fire. And so it instantly caught her on fire. Like she was engulfed in flames, like instantly. And all of those sequins melted into her chest. And so when she got to the hospital, they knew that they were, that they couldn't treat her because we lived in Idaho. And so they knew they had to life flight her somewhere else. And so they life flighted her to Utah. And um, when she got to Utah. My husband had flown with her and I was pregnant with our last son. And the doctor called and she was like, you need to get down here now. She's not going to make it. And so my, I went into panic mode. We, I drove to Utah instantly. Um, she had coded on the way to Utah and then two more times in Utah. And um, the first week was like the hardest week because everything kept going wrong. Like she was coding. They didn't think she was going to make it. And so um, she died and they would have to bring her back. So she did that three times. And so they were like, she's not going to make it. And so they were having us like make funeral arrangements, like preparing us. And uh, I think that that was like the scariest thing in the world. And then they put her into an induced coma. And then after that, they were like, well, she's not going to be a normal kid if she overcomes this because she was burned on over 39% of her body with third, fourth and fifth degree burns. But she did. (laughs) A survivor right there. Aaliyah, do you remember any of it? Yes. I mean, at the age of eight, I can't even imagine. And then, you know, you just, I mean, I'm looking at you and you're definitely, like I said, a survivor and for someone to tell you as a mom, I now can understand because I have a daughter. If someone were to tell me, number one, your kid is engulfed in flames and then their heart is stopping. I mean, I can't even imagine what you were going through in that moment. So after you find out like she's going to be okay, you know, she's going to survive. What was the next step that they told you to take? At first, we still weren't out of the woodwork. So every week was like a closer um, step to, okay, we're getting to survival rate. So with fifth degree burns, that means that the fire has gone down into your muscle and has now hit like your bones and stuff. So they removed a lot of her muscle out of her back, her arm, her hip. And they said that she wanted to walk again. They said she wanted to ride again. And we were prepared that, you know, we were going to have a disabled child. And then um, for us, it was more like, because both my husband and I were, were very strong individuals. We've come from very hard backgrounds. And so we're like, we can't do that. We can't let her make this like a disability. And so every time they would come in and want to do something new, we'd get to 
try to encourage her to do, make sure that she did it, you know, but um, then like, so she's had 13 surgeries so far. And so, um, and she's not done. So after the first couple weeks, um, like when we were in the, we were in like what I call the gray area of either she'll make it or she won't. Um, she had to keep having um, autographs done and hemographs. And the um, autographs are, or sorry, the hemographs are when uh, they use like cadaver skin. Okay. And so they would use that to grow her tissue back so that we could use or do the autographs. And so um, for her, she had five of those done. And we spent almost three months in the hospital in Salt Lake. And there we met so many, like, the nicest people. Like, Utah has some of the nicest people ever. And we, have like, grew a whole family there in Utah. But um, we uh, would have to go through physical therapy daily. We'd have to go through wound care daily. Um, she'd have to – she kept getting regrafted. And then we finally got to go home after almost three months. And um, – when we went home, she continued to have grafting done. Actually goes next month for another surgery. It'll be surgery number 14. Tia, because you said you'd worked in a hospital at the time, correct? Had you ever seen anything like this or dealt with anything like this? Or was a lot of this sort of brand new? No, all of this was brand new to all of us. So I worked in the lab. So I only, you know, mess with blood. That was it. So this was even for because we lived in a small town in Idaho. So even for our doctors and our nurses there, it was like horrifying because they'd never, none of them actually knew how to handle this situation. And right. And they were calling like other hospitals and surrounding areas that did burn, like dealt with burn survivors and stuff and asking them questions. And so it was pretty intense because we didn't know what to do. Or any of that. Well, yeah. How would you know what to do? I mean, it's like, to be honest, I didn't even know that fifth degree burns existed until I got your guys' letter. You know, my, my grandfather I experienced, he caught on fire and had third degree burns on his back. So when I read fifth degree burns, so I'm so glad that you you said what that meant, that it goes to the bone. How would you know how to deal with that? So for her 14th surgery that she's going back for, first, I want to ask you probably a stupid question, Aaliyah. You've been through 13 of these. Is it something you're used to? Or every time you have to go in, do you get nervous? I know that it's a really silly question, but I just want to know. Sometimes when I go in, I get nervous. But then some, like the other few times, I'm used to it. All right. So the 14th surgery and what will that one entail? Right now, they want to do more lasering. She gets lasering every couple months, and um, they may have to do more grafting. And then we are waiting for a time period. It might be like Christmas break or something. She's going to have to have a, a major surgery where... Nope, go in there. She's going to have to have a major surgery where they regraft all of her armpits and everything. And so when they do that, that's that those are the scary ones those are the scary ones yeah because usually um she's very prone to staph infection okay Mm -hmm. and so those are the ones where they're scary like her last one um she had her hips regrafted and she had developed staph and MRSA in her hip and so they have oh my gosh leech baths and there's a a mate a big medical term for them but i can't remember but anyways it's a bleach bath so essentially they're just pouring bleach over that open wound. Wow. And so um, those are the scariest ones. So we're waiting for that one. So I want to know, Aaliyah, what, what do you like to do? I mean, all of the things that doctors told your mom and dad that you wouldn't be able to do. Can you do them? Yes. <laughs> That's dope. What, yeah. What do you like to do? Do you draw? Do you play any sports? Do you... You obviously send amazing notes and packages. Lala got the cutest package from you. But yeah, what do you like to do? I like to play basketball and do art. I love that. Do you have a favorite basketball team? Um, no. No? <laughs> what about the Utah Jazz? I'm from Utah, you know. 
<laughs> the Utah Jazz did send her a package when she was in the hospital. <laughs> I love that. I did want to ask about the hospital because, Aaliyah, you were in there for quite a while. And I know it sounds like you're still back. Did you kind of make any friends with the nurses or the doctors? I know, Tia, you said you met a lot of amazing people. Were there any experiences? Did you kind of like make friends with any of them or anything like that? Yes, I had two friends in there and then I made some friends with the doctors. Oh, I love that. I love that too. I love that you said, by the way, you wouldn't know it by watching me on TV that I'm nice, but I feel like I'm pretty nice and I'm from <laughs> Utah. So I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I did want to ask you, Aaliyah, one more thing. You said in your letter that you sent to me that you've experienced bullying, but it's from more adults than kids your age. Do you feel comfortable sharing more about that? Yes. How do you feel about that, Mama? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Can of whoop ass, right? Sorry. Cover your ears, Aaliyah. No, it's hard because you would expect an adult to understand more than a child. But as an adult, I guess you have more of an opinion, whereas kids, they're just like, whatever, like they just, you know, right. go with the flow. They don't care. Even with, you know, color, kids don't really see color. They just want friends, you know, whereas adults, they, a lot of them see that kind of thing. And so we've had lots of comments come from adults or staring or just ignorant things. And, um, there's been lots of times where I've had to hold my tongue because mm. I police department, so <laughs> I can't do the things that I want to do. <laughs> but um, when it comes to kids, they just look at her and they're like, dang, you survived that. Whereas adults are like, dang, what are what's wrong with her? Like, what happened to her? Why does she look like that? And that was one of the things that we had to really instill in her is that she's you know beautiful no matter what and if somebody bullies you you give them a compliment back because if they're bullying you there's just something wrong with them I love that you say that because I have to take that you know like kill them with kindness it sounds like you know you hear that all the time but I've noticed that that kind of does put an end to things when they start coming for you it's so interesting that these grown adults who are responsible for raising children that you hope will go out into the world and be productive and kind. And, you know, how, how do you fix that when, like, the parent who's responsible for making that happen is an asshole? Yeah. I'm sorry, Aaliyah. I say <laughs> naughty words sometimes. Again, come here. Let's make this simple. What did you say to the doctor when she told you you want to be able to ride again or walk again? <laughs> she goes, the hell I won't. <laughs> yes, queen. You better tell him, girl. I love, I love it. I love That's that. That's the best attitude. Can I tell you, when I read your letter, and I, I told you this at the beginning, you are so inspiring. And I want you to know that there are going to be people who are going to say things to you, but you keep that thick skin, Aaliyah, because it has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. And with this mama you got, you're going to be just fine in life. And we are sending you so much love for your next surgery. You're going to be amazing. You are amazing. And I am so grateful that you guys took time to be on my podcast today. We very much appreciate it. Um, like we said in the letter, we definitely weren't expecting this. When she started her business, we wanted to try to give back to the people that inspired her, or, you know, gave her some confidence. And you're definitely one of them. She watches you because I watch you on, you know, Vanderpump Rules and everything. And so, you know, she gets to see your spunky side and how you don't put up with bull crap. And that's, you know, something that she's been able to embrace, especially when people are, you know, mean to you, you give it right back. And so in a way, without you knowing, you've also helped her. And so when she created her business, she wanted to give back to those who unintentionally and without knowing helped her. And, you know, that's why we sent that to you because you are one of them. Well, I'm beyond humbled and honored to be sitting here talking to you guys. And where can people find your business, Aaliyah? On her Instagram. And then it's also on Facebook. Okay. And what is your Instagram? It's Aaliyah.hearts on, on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Instagram is more of her business. And on Facebook, it's under Aaliyah's journey. And that's more of 
we document everything. So anytime she goes in for a surgery, anything, we document everything because we want people to see when you fall hard, you can, you know, stand up and be even stronger. And that's what her business is about is she wanted to create something with, that would help others remember who they are before whatever it was that happened to them happened. And so that's what Aaliyah's heart is all about is making sure that others know how strong they are inside and out and letting you know if you're, you know, whether it's physically a physical thing or mental or whatever it is, like you're beautiful no matter what and you're strong and you're courageous and all of that. Amen to that. I said it in the letter, Aaliyah. I can't wait to see what you do in your future because you, my love, are absolutely incredible. So thank you so much. There are about a million podcasts about money, but Bad With Money with Gabby Dunn is the one where finances meet social justice. We're going to make Mal play games on the internet that were designed to teach people about money, and we're going to see if they actually teach people about money. Can you set up what the stock market game was? It's just the stock market, but it's not real money. And the things that they chose to make real, I this makes no sense. Like They were like, you can't trade after hours. And I was like, this isn't real. Bad With Money. Listen, wherever you get your podcasts.